present. Romans to Philemon, Acts 9 to 28 is the transition from Peter to Paul. Gentiles now have hope because of the blood of Christ. But now, these two words indicate a dispensational change. In Christ Jesus she who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 13 The Lord Jesus Christ's ministry from heaven. The prophesied earthly kingdom is postponed. Satan was about to be the most surprised creature in heaven and on earth. God had a secret plan and decided to use his enemy Saul to help execute it. As mentioned, God did not send his prophesied wrath on the people of the earth. Instead, he saved the chief of sinners, showed him grace, and appointed him to be his minister. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Romans 15 verse 16 The Lord Jesus Christ interrupted prophecy, inserted the dispensation of the grace of God in which we now live, and formed the body of Christ. Jesus Christ chose Paul as his spokesperson for his ministry from heaven, just like Moses had been the main spokesperson for him during Israel's formation as a nation and the giving of the law. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me, Paul, to you ward. Ephesians 3 verse 2, the mystery, secret, of Christ is revealed. The rapture is exclusively found in Paul's epistles. The dispensation of grace and the formation of the church, the body of Christ both began with Paul's salvation on the road to Damascus. When the Gentiles return to globalism, such as they had at the Tower of Babel, God will decide to cut off, Rom. 1122, this dispensation with the rapture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, then we shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 and 17. Christ has given us a blessed hope and we look for his appearing. The Salvation of Saul of Tarsus, A.D. 35 Suddenly, without being prophesied in the Bible, the glorified Lord Jesus Christ returned from heaven and appeared in the air to Paul and spoke with him. Saul, Paul, explained to King Agrippa what happened. I persecuted them, those who believed that Christ was their king, even unto strange cities. I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests. At midday, I saw a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks, your conscience. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest, but rise, and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared to you thee for this purpose, to you make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear to you, -E -E, delivering thee from the people, Israel, and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and inheritance among them which are sanctified. By faith which is in me. Acts 26 verses 11 to 18. Asterisk notice that Jesus just said that the faith was in him, more on that later. Stephen had seen Jesus standing ready to execute his wrath that John the Baptist had warned the unbelieving nation of Israel of. Matthew 3 verse 7, Isaiah 3 verse 13. But instead, the ascended, glorified Lord Jesus dramatically appeared to Saul and commissioned him to save all men. But the Lord said, He, Paul, is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Acts 9 verse 15 Instead of the prophesied wrath, God at present offers grace and peace to all who will believe, to all. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 1 verse 7. Grace and peace. 
Jesus started something brand new with Paul. Jesus Christ made Paul the apostle of the Gentiles. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Romans 11 verse 13. An apostle is someone who is first sent with a message. Christ sent Peter, and then he sent Paul. Christ gave the mystery revelation to Paul progressively, appearing and speaking to him several times. Acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 37. Then again, I will come to you, O visions and revelations of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 1. Jesus spoke to Paul at other times. In Acts 22, Jesus said he should depart from Jerusalem for he would send him to the Gentiles. Christ told Paul that his grace was sufficient for him in 2 Corinthians 12. The Ministry of Paul, the Apostle of the Gentiles Paul's distinctive ministry was full of difficulties and sufferings. He must suffer for my name's sake, Acts 9 verse 16. After being saved, Paul spent three years in Damascus and Arabia learning from Jesus. Jesus kept his apostle, Paul, separate from the twelve because he gave Paul a different message. But when it pleased God, who separated me, to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia, and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and abode with him fifteen days. Galatians 1 verses 15 to 18 Paul had to escape from Damascus in a basket because the Jews wanted to have him caught. In Damascus the governor, with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me, and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 32 and 33 Paul went to Jerusalem to join the little flock of believers there, but they were afraid of him since he had persecuted them in the past. Barnabas, a little flock believer, became Paul's friend and introduced him to the others. Paul began to preach Jesus in Jerusalem, but he soon ran into trouble with the unbelieving Jews, which spoke Greek since they went about to slay him, Acts 9 verse 29. For his safety, the believer sent Paul to his hometown, Tarsus. News reached Peter and the little flock that many in Antioch of Syria believed in Jesus, so they sent Barnabas to investigate. When Barnabas saw that many Jews and Gentiles believed at Antioch, he went to find Paul because he remembered that Jesus had made him the apostle of the Gentiles. The church at Antioch flourished. After a year, the Holy Ghost let them know that he wanted Paul and Barnabas to go and preach in other places. Paul's First Apostolic Journey Paul and Barnabas took their first apostolic journey with John Mark to Cyprus, the home of Barnabas, and Asia Minor, Pamphylia, Galatia, in modern-day Turkey. John Mark, the nephew to Barnabas, decided to leave when the going got tough early in their travels. Their method of preaching was first to the Jews in their synagogues and then to the Gentiles. However, they ran into strong opposition from both the Jews and the Gentiles. Many Jews were angry because they thought Paul was speaking against Moses and the law. They despised Paul because he preached justification by faith alone in what Christ had done, apart from Israel being God's channel of blessing and the keeping of the law of Moses. They wanted to stone Paul to death because he said, By him all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Acts 13 verse 39 on the other hand, the Gentiles were very entrenched in their false gods and idol worship. After Paul healed a man born crippled, they even tried to worship Paul and Barnabas. Paul stopped them saying we are only men, worship God. However, the unbelieving Jews arrived from the other towns that Paul and Barnabas had preached in. 
They persuaded the Gentiles to stone Paul. Ga stoned, drug out of town, and left for dead in Lystra. Paul's friends were surprised when he revived. The brave apostles returned through the same towns where they had told the people about Jesus. They encouraged all the believers in their faith. Then they assisted the church groups in appointing older faithful men to help them continue to trust in what Jesus had done. Paul and Barnabas returned to their headquarters in Antioch, in Syria, and told their friends how God had helped them start the churches on their trip. Paul preached that nothing people do saves them, only faith in what Jesus has done matters. We are justified by his faith. It is our faith in the faith of Jesus that matters. All modern Bibles, except the King James Bible, change the little word of to in. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed I in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 2 verse 16 The doctrine of the faith of Jesus is changed in all modern Bibles. They replace the word of with the word in removing the fact that it was Jesus. Who had the faith, putting the emphasis on the believer, not Christ? We only put our faith in what he has already done. Jesus had to trust and obey all that the Father told him. He had to live a perfect life, teach the believing in Israel, and demonstrate who he was. Then he had to believe that his death would satisfy the righteous requirement of God the Father. He also had to go through with dying, believing that his Father would raise him up from the dead. The little word of makes a big difference. See faith of Jesus in the appendix. Paul was furious when some believers from the little flock in Jerusalem came to Antioch and told the believers there that they had to be circumcised to be saved. Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Acts 15 verse 1. Paul said that if people are circumcised, they are showing their lack of faith in Christ. Behold, I Paul say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Galatians 5 verse 2. Paul preached that Christ did it all and that circumcision was not important. Paul wrote, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Galatians 5 verse 11. But the Jews had been taught circumcision was the sign of the covenant between them and God in Genesis 17. A big argument broke out. Finally, Jesus instructed Paul to go up to Jerusalem to settle the matter I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, Galatians 2 verse 2. The Jerusalem Council. So, 17 years after his conversion, Paul, Barnabas, and Titus arrived in Jerusalem and had several meetings with the little flock of believers there. Many in Jerusalem had begun to wonder why the kingdom on earth had not come saying, where is the promise of his coming? 2 Peter 3 verse 4 In the Jerusalem council, Peter spoke up on Paul's behalf. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, A good while ago God made choice, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Acts 15 verse 7 Peter said that God had saved Cornelius, a centurion who blessed Israel, and his household, so why should they force the Gentiles to keep the law which even the Jews could not keep? As we shall find out, Paul's ministry and the secret was about much more than Gentile salvation. Then the council listened to Barnabas and Paul who declared what miracles and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them, Acts 15 verse 12. The signs that Paul was doing showed that God was now working through Paul and his ministry. The Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22. Peter and Paul preached different messages to different audiences. Two Gospels? Peter preached the Gospel of Circumcision. 
Key, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, Paul preached the gospel of uncircumcision. Paul explained to the little flock that good news, the gospel of the grace of God, that Christ had given him. Eventually, Peter, James, John, and the others of the little flock finally saw that the Lord Jesus Christ had given Paul a different gospel and apostleship than Peter. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, Jews, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Galatians 2 verses 7 and 8 E A R S R A L L Y two different gospels, but contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, Galatians 2 verse 7 KJV. Jesus sent Paul of Christ heavenly ty these are two different gospels one heavenly and one earthly finally the little flock of believers perceived or understood the different message of grace that the ascended glorified lord jesus christ in heaven had given to paul they may have realized that god was now doing something new through paul and when james cephas peter and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, made an agreement of approval in good faith, that we should go unto the heathen, all nations, and they unto the circumcision, Israel. Galatians 2 verse 9 So the two groups of believers made an agreement. The little flock, who preached the gospel of the coming earthly kingdom, would go to the circumcision while Paul, would go to the heathen, all unbelievers. Those Jews and Gentiles who believed the gospel Paul preached became heaven-bound members of the body of Christ. Israel 12 Tribes 12 Apostles 00 8128 000 1 Apostle Paul, Body of Christ The 12 Apostles preached to Israel while one apostle preached to all nations. Paul was a Jew and a Roman citizen, so he was the perfect choice to preach to the body of Christ made up of both individual Jews and Gentiles. At the Jerusalem Council, James gave the final verdict. He said he was sorry that some men from their group had troubled the believers in Antioch, but that they had not sent them. For as much as we have heard, that certain, which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, Ye must be circumcised, and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment, Acts 15 verse 24. James said that circumcision of the flesh was not necessary for the Gentiles' salvation. He also said that it would be good if the Gentiles would not stumble the Jews with what they ate and would avoid fornication. After shaking hands, the little flock sent a letter to the believers in Antioch. Two of their best men, Judas and Silas, accompanied Paul and his friends back to Antioch. Many of the little flock had been wondering why the Lord was delaying sending his wrath, mentioned by John the Baptist in Matthew 3 and by Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, and his second coming. The answer was that the risen, ascended, glorified Lord Jesus Christ had begun a new unprophesied ministry from heaven through Paul. The Twelve never fulfilled the Great Commission. Peter and the Eleven preached the gospel of the kingdom. Peter's ministry was placed on hold in Acts 15, but it will resume in the future earthly kingdom when he is resurrected to reign with Jesus, his Messiah and King. Peter wrote to the scattered little flock of Israel believers that Jesus is long-suffering, for nearly 2,000 years so far, because he wants to save as many as possible and that they should learn from the wisdom contained in the scriptures Paul wrote.
Peter said that some of what Paul said was difficult to understand. Of course Peter had been taught a different message by Jesus in his earthly ministry to Israel. and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. 2 Peter 3 verses 15 and 16 Jesus was, but now is. Jesus was a minister to the circumcision, the nation of Israel. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision, the nation of Israel, for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his twelve sons. Romans 15 verse 8 But now Jesus is, the risen, ascended head of the church, the body of Christ. What Christ ministered from heaven through Paul is our latest information. Unlike Peter, Paul said he did not follow Christ's earthly ministry, but his ministry from heaven. Paul did not preach what Christ taught in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Paul said that we no longer follow the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yeah, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him in no more. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 16 the temporary spiritual gifts given to Paul and the body of Christ were to show Israel that God was now operating through Paul and his ministry. Signs validate a ministry. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22 Paul's Second Apostolic Journey Sometime after they returned to Antioch, Paul wanted to take another apostolic journey to check on the churches. Barnabas insisted on bringing Mark, but Paul refused to bring him since he had deserted them on the first trip so they split up. Paul took Silas and they were joined by Timothy in Lystra and Dr. Luke in Troas. They were converting Jews and Gentiles by the power of the gospel of Christ whenever they could. They ran into trouble in Philippi where Paul and Silas were jailed. Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Acts 16 verse 31. After their release more trouble followed in Thessalonica and Berea. Paul had to jump on a ship to Athens. He preached at Mars Hill. Then Paul went to Corinth. Silas and Timothy joined him there. A pilmal. Paul preached Christ crucified for our sins and risen again, wherever he went. Paul's Third Apostolic Journey On his third apostolic journey, Paul spent nearly three years in Ephesus. For two of those years, he taught at a school, so all of Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, heard him, the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks, Acts 19 verses 9 and 10. This profitable ministry lasted until the silver and coppersmiths caused such an uproar that it was safest for him to leave. The metal workers who made shrines to the false goddess Diana were upset that Paul was making them lose customers since so many in that great city of Ephesus now trusted in the gospel of Christ. Moreover, brethren, I, Paul, declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, and do not start believing in something else such as what you have done, unless ye have believed in vain. For I, Paul, delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ, God in the flesh, died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1-4 564. CH 1210. One thus decently and in order. Salvation instructions dash. Stat. Gifts. The. 40. Let all things be done. 18. Moreover, breath 15 REN, I declare unto you, K the gospel, which I preached Tim. 
received orando wearing ye unto you, which also ye have. ISS N. John, stand. Or. 2 by which also ye are in 46 saved, if ye keep in memory to what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. 33. 3 For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also re eleven seed, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, Bash, 14, and that he was buried. H. And that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, Ushage, Lola Voices, 9163 of 5. And that he was seen Cephas, then of the twelve, six after that, he was seen of E.S. Paul traveled through Macedonia, Illyricum, Dalmatia, former Yugoslavia, back to Corinth in Greece. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Romans 15 verse 19 Paul heard that the unbelieving Jews in Greece planned to catch him as he was about to sail from Greece to Jerusalem, so he and his friends traveled back mostly by land. Eventually, they arrived at their destination. In Jerusalem, Paul was arrested. This saved his life from the Jews who were beating him up. They wanted to kill him because he preached that Gentiles could be saved apart from going to God through Israel and apart from the law. The Jews believed that they were to be the channel of the blessings of Abraham to the Gentiles, and they will be when God resumes his dealings with Israel after the rapture. Rome. Three taverns. 1. Forum of Appius. Dan Men Plans Dead M. Preaching the Gospels of Wetsis Soputinu. Pute Lia. Pampoli. Messana. Sicily. May. Paul was more than a missionary because he was the one apostle chosen by Jesus Christ from heaven to form the body of Christ in this dispensation of grace. His journeys were apostolic, he alone says, according to my gospel. After more than two years of being a prisoner in Israel under Procurator Felix, and then Festus, Paul was sent to Rome as a prisoner. On the way, they suffered his fourth shipwreck, but everyone on board survived. Three days after Paul arrived in Rome under house arrest, he summoned the local Jews to come and hear his message. Most of them rejected his message. So Paul said, for the third and final time, Acts 13 46, 18 colon 6, 28 colon 28, from now on I am going to the Gentiles. Paul had tried to provoke the Jews to believe that God was working. Through him, by the sign gifts he had been given, and his preaching, so that they could be rescued from eternal punishment and become body of Christ members. With Paul's decision to go to the Gentiles, sign gifts ended. Paul explained that the Jews stumbled at the cross when they killed Jesus, their Messiah. They then fell at the stoning of Stephen, the rejection of their last offer of the kingdom through the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost. I say then, have they stumbled, at the cross, that they should fall, the stoning of Stephen? God forbid, but rather through their false salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing, during the Acts period, of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. God is not finished with Israel, he is yet to bless them. Romans 11 verses 11 and 12 In a letter, Paul recounts some of his sufferings of the Jews five times received, I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, 
Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, Paul prayed for the churches, and made sure they had leaders, 2 Corinthians 11 verses 24-28. Like Paul our pattern, we will suffer. But then Paul wrote, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8 verse 18 Paul wrote several letters, many were to the churches he had begun. The thirteen letters he wrote comprise the sound doctrine for the church, the body of Christ. Paul remained on house arrest for two years. After the hearing of his defense, Paul was released. Paul traveled to check on the churches he had begun. He may have taken his planned trip to Spain. He left Timothy in charge at Ephesus, then went to Nicopolis, near Philippi, for the winter. Paul asked Titus to join him after his replacement arrived in Crete, where Titus was ministering. At some point, Paul was rearrested, brought to Rome and placed in a dungeon. He wrote his last letter to Timothy before he was executed. History says he was martyred being beheaded by Nero, probably in 67 or 68 AD. Paul wrote to Timothy, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith, 2 Timothy 4 verse 7. He had written down the foundational doctrine for the new creature, the body of Christ, just like Jesus wanted. The Formation of the Body of Christ The Lord Jesus Christ called Paul to build a new agency, the church, the body of Christ. Paul laid the foundation. Paul is the master builder and his foundation is Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. 2T215 Study To shew thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 1 Co 3.10 According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth. Thereupon, our Apostle Paul, authorized King James Version, the body of Christ members build on the sound doctrine laid down by Paul. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10 Jesus Christ began something new therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. He formed the body of Christ, the one new man, Ephesians 2 verse 15, new apostle, Paul, new gospel, justification by faith, new dispensation, of grace, new agency, the body of Christ, new audience, all people, new operating system, grace, not the law, new ministry, reconciliation, new destiny, heaven. Before Paul no one knew that the household of God was a duplex. The blueprint for the whole other side of the building was not known until Christ revealed it to Paul. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 5 The duplex represents the family of true believers in heaven and earth. Ephesians 2 verses 18 to 22, 3 15, Colossians 1 verses 15 to 20 The kingdom of God is over all. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. 1 Timothy 1 verse 17. Righteousness, peace, and Calvary covers it all. Prophecy, Kingdom of Heaven. 1,000-year reign of Christ. Prophetic saints are blessed with physical and spiritual blessings upon the earth. Joy in the Holy Spirit. The foundation of the prophets and twelve apostles is Christ as King. Mystery. Heavenly Kingdom Christ is in royal exile. Members of the body of Christ are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies with physical blessings and added benefit. The foundation of the apostles, Paul, Timothy, Titus, etc., and prophets is Christ as head. The Life and Letters of the Apostle Peter, by Paul M. Sadler, P.G. 
33. Peter spoke to the house of Israel, Acts 2 verse 36, and Paul said, Ye are God's building, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. Jesus Christ is the foundation according to the revelation of the mystery, and the foundation according to prophecy. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11 According to prophecy, Jesus is the rock to build that church on. Behold, I lay in shown a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. 1 Peter 2 verse 6 Jesus said, Upon this rock will I build my church, Matthew 16 verse 18. Both groups of people are redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Paul was the first person into the body of Christ and he is our pattern for today. I, Paul, obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long-suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting, 1 Timothy 1 verse 16. This current church began with him. We follow Paul to follow Christ. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. Christ made Paul the spokesman for this dispensation. A dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Paul, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 17. The two main divisions in the Bible are prophecy and mystery. We are living in the dispensation of the grace of God. To dispense means to distribute, give out. A gas station dispenses gasoline. God dispenses a set of instructions for a group of people to follow for a specific period of time. God never changes, but his instructions to mankind has changed over time. Some could not eat a certain fruit, one had to build an ark, another to believe that he would have descendants who would become a nation and inherit a land, and so on. The word dispensation occurs four times in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 17, Ephesians 1 10, 3 colon 2, Colossians 1 verse 25. In this age, the operating system for the believer is grace, not the law. In this dispensation, God is dispensing grace. His instruction to mankind by way of his messenger, Paul, is sound doctrine and to believe the gospel. Anyone can be saved by believing the good news in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and and that he rose. Again the third day, according to the scriptures, 1 COR 15 colon 1 4, KJV. This is the true gospel today, during this age of grace, as reported to us by our Apostle Paul, recorded and preserved in the authorized King James Version. God died for our sins and rose. Believe and be saved. Faith plus nothing. Today, in the dispensation of grace, God is not holding our sins against us. A person sends themselves to eternal hell not because of the wrong things he does, but because of his unbelief in what Christ has done for him on the cross and his resurrection. To wit, namely, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19 God began a new dispensation when he saved Paul. Now, law is not an effect, but grace, ye are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6 verse 14 Paul explained that Israel is not the preferred nation today, but should be treated as any other nation, and be saved by the same gospel. The middle wall of partition between the circumcised, Israel, and the uncircumcision, the Gentiles, is broken down, for he is our peace, who hath made both one, 
and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Ephesians 2 verse 14 Israel is considered to be just like any other nation today. Jesus Christ has created a new organism of both Jews and Gentiles. Today, there is no difference between individual Jews, not the nation, and Gentiles. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for T.O. make in himself of twain, individual Jews and Gentiles, one new man, the body of Christ, with Jesus as the head, so making peace. Ephesians 2 verse 15 Today we are all one body of believers in Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3 verse 28 In the beginning of his ministry Paul went to the Jew first, until the diminishing of Israel was complete in Acts 28. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Romans 1 verse 16 Acts is a book of transition. The book of Acts demonstrates why God is justified in setting aside the nation of Israel. First, they rejected Peter's message, and then they rejected Paul's message. The transition goes from God's man Peter to Paul. For a while, Paul had signed gifts to show the Jews that God was now working through him. The Book of Acts In the Light of The Dispensational Truth King Slain Matt.27 John 4.22 Davidic Covenant San 712-17 Cron 1711-14 PSA 8953-57 Matt 51-3 Rom 15 colon 8 Acts 32526 Repentance Saul of Council Paul's Last Prophecy The Mystery Pardon Tarsus Held at Visit to The Israel Confirmed Revealed Ingdom Go by John Baptist Offered Raised Up Jerusalem Jerusalem 2 through Chosen Acts 9 Acts IS Acts 21 Promised People Christ 12 Worship Covenants Priesthood and Law theirs are 94. Christ on earth for gospels, gospel to the Jew. During Acts, a transition is made from Peter and the believing remnant of Israel, the little flock mentioned in Luke 12 verse 32, to Paul and the body of Christ. The sign gifts were temporarily given to Paul and the body of Christ to show Israel that God was now operating through Paul and his ministry. The Corinthian church shared a wall with a Jewish synagogue, Acts 18 verse 7. After three strikes, the Jews were out, Acts 13 46, 18 colon 6, 28 colon 28. The provoking ministry, Romans 11 verse 11, to the Jews and sign gifts ended in Acts 28 with the complete revelation of the mystery to Paul. But when that which is perfect is come, the complete revelation to Paul, then that which is I in part, temporary sign gifts, shall be done away. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 10 The sign gifts also supported the church in its infancy. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 11 and 12 God postponed Peter's message. Paul's message had been to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, Romans 1 verse 16, but now he decides to stop going to the Jew first. Now Paul brings the message of how God solved the sin problem with his powerful loving sacrifice to the Gentiles. During this dispensation of the grace of God, only those who believe the gospel of Christ, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4, become members of the body of Christ. It is important when studying the Bible not to claim our neighbor's mail. All scripture is profitable for our learning, but we need to know who God is speaking to. Some instruction in the Bible is for past saints and some for future Israel that do not have anything to do with the church today. Israel In Body of Christ Don't claim your neighbor's mail. The mystery 
A mystery is a divine secret kept by God until he decides to reveal it. Many people today believe that Paul's ministry merely involved the salvation of the Gentiles, but it was much more than that. Paul preached the mystery that God was forming a new agency, the body of Christ, to populate and fill the heavenly places. The church will replace and judge the evil angels. The dispensation of grace in which we live is called a mystery because it was not prophesied but was revealed by Christ to Paul and then to us. Perhaps the greatest exposition on the grace message found in the Bible are the following verses, read them slowly several times. For this cause I Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you ward, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote afore in few words, whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which I in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the UNSERCHABLE, not found in Scripture before, riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 9. We now know what this mystery was, and so does Satan to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Ephesians 3 verse 10, God's wisdom has been made known, and the principalities and powers are learning what God has done and is doing through the body of Christ believers. Due Time Why did the dispensation of grace not begin at the cross? Because it was not yet due time. The secret God had kept was revealed to Paul precisely at the right time, in due time. It was not due time during the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. It was not due time during Israel's one-year extension of mercy. But when Israel rejected the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost, by stoning Stephen, then it was due time. Without warning the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven dramatically saved Paul, no one else has ever been saved that way, and made him his apostle to all nations, Romans 1 verse 5 and 16 26. Israel fell down to the level of all other nations. It was now due time for God to reveal the glorious secret which he had kept to Paul so that Paul could write about it. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Titus 1 verse 3 To Paul Jesus revealed that he had not only died for Israel, but also for the Gentiles in mystery, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time. 1 Timothy 2 verse 6 For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5 verse 6 what was the secret? The glorious gospel, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, justification by faith, allows God to form the body of Christ and the little flock before and during the tribulation and Israel under the future new covenant. God revealed to Paul that he was holding back his week of wrath and temporarily suspending his prophetic program with Israel and that he was bringing in a new and unprophesied dispensation. God is reclaiming dominion of heaven from the prince of the power of the air, Satan. Today, Jews and Gentiles are saved into the body of Christ and are spiritually the same. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Ephesians 3 verse 6 God is forming a new group, the one new man, Ephesians 2 verse 15, the church, to fill the heavenly places and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
Ephesians 2 verse 6 Sound Doctrine Paul encouraged Titus, his fellow worker in the ministry, to hold fast to the sound doctrine revealed to him, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Titus 1 verse 9 Paul said that he did not receive his information from another human but from Jesus Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1 verses 11 and 12 The information or sound doctrine given to Paul from the ascended Lord Jesus is found in his 13 letters, Romans to Philemon. 2 Timothy was the last book written in the Bible. Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which has been HID from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Colossians 1 verses 25 and 26 All the 66 books of the King James Bible are for us, but the 13 letters of Paul are TOUS. Old Testament New Testament Wisdom, Law History, Gospels Minor Prophets, Acts History, Letters of Paul to Churches Major Prophets Letters of Paul to Individuals General Letters Apocalyptic Romans to Philemon, in the 13 letters of Paul, we find the sound doctrine, for the body of Christ. Learn how to rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. My Gospel The glorified Lord Jesus Christ made Paul the apostle of the Gentiles and gave him a distinctive ministry. Three times Paul says my Gospel. 1. Paul says that Jesus Christ will judge unbelievers in this dispensation by his gospel. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, Romans 2 verse 16, 2, believers today can be established according to the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but that is now made known. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest. Romans 16 verses 25 and 26 3. Jesus Christ of the lineage of David rose according to Paul's gospel. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8 Paul says, My gospel, because Christ gave the revelation to him. God solved the sin problem of mankind with imputed righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. Romans 4 verses 23 to 25. Paul's my gospel is justification by faith. Romans 5 verse 1. Because of his son's perfect life and sacrifice, the father is able to impute his son's righteousness, his spirit, his life, all three are synonymous, to two groups his heavenly group, the body of Christ, now and his earthly group, the little flock before and during the tribulation and Israel under the future new covenant. Paul revealed how God could remain just while declaring a believing sinner justified because of Christ's fully satisfying blood sacrifice as payment for sins and his imputed righteousness. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith. In his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I, Paul, say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus, Romans 3 verses 24 to 26. Secret Mystery 
Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Romans 16 verse 25 Jesus revealed them to Paul. The secret. God had a secret, but it is now revealed. God had kept his plan of the formation of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace a mystery, unknown since before the foundation of the earth. According as he hath chosen us I and him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Ephesians 1 verse 4 God revealed his secret to all through Paul. Paul explains that he was given the secret of the mystery, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Colossians 1 verse 26 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. Romans 16 verses 25 and 26 A mystery is hidden wisdom. God said that Satan thought that he was wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Ezekiel 28 verse 3 But Satan was wrong. There was a secret hidden God. Ephesians 3 verse 9 That he didn't know. God inserted the mystery, the dispensation of grace, between the 69th and 70th week of Daniel's timeline. The secret is out, so now the goal for the church is to help everyone know it because Satan still wants to conceal it. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3 verse 9 it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, keep a secret. Proverbs 25 verse 2 Why did God keep this secret? God kept the secret so that Satan would not know that God's goal was to reclaim both the heaven and the earth and that Christ would triumph on the cross. Because Satan would not have allowed Christ to be crucified if he knew that God planned to reclaim not only the earth but also the heaven. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world, Satan, his cohorts, and people empowered by him, knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 7 and 8 God caught Satan in his own craftiness. Satan thought he had destroyed God's plan when Christ was rejected by his people and crucified. But the crucifixion sealed Satan's doom. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise, Satan, in their own craftiness. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 19 God's wisdom was to keep the secret from being published in His word because Satan reads the Bible and then tries to foil God's plan. Satan brought about his own defeat when he crucified Christ and lost everything. At Calvary Jesus Christ was victorious over Satan and the fallen angels. And having spoiled, plundered, robbed, principalities and powers, the temporary governmental domains of Satan and his cohorts, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Colossians 2 verse 15 The secret is revealed, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3 verses 5 and 9 Satan could not trace the plan to build the heavenly body of Christ in the Bible because it was not revealed anywhere in the Bible until it was revealed to Paul. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How UNSERCHABLE, the dispensation of grace and the formation of the body of Christ were untraceable until God revealed them through Paul, are his judgments, and his ways past finding out. Romans 11 verse 33 God proved that he is the only wise God, 1 Timothy 1 verse 17. God outsmarted the wisest being that he had created, and used the devil, Satan, for his purposes. 
The key verse in the Bible. The only verse in the Bible that tells us how to study the Bible is 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The instruction is to rightly divide truth, not error from truth, but truth from truth. All the Bible is truth, but it needs to be divided up so we know which part is our truth. It makes sense that Paul who told us to divide truth, would also tell us how to divide truth, and he does that in Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul gives us three time divisions, time past, but now, ages to come. Time past, Ephesians 2 verses 11 and 12 Wherefore remember, that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now, Ephesians 2 verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ages to come, Ephesians 2 verse 7, That in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ revealed to us through Paul how to divide the word of God. A distinctive feature indicating that time past is in effect is whenever God makes a distinction between the Jews and all other nations. This distinction is called the middle wall of partition, Ephesians 2 verse 14, God gave Israel. The covenant of circumcision, Genesis 17, making them unlike all other nations. When God added the law by Moses, he solidified the difference between the Jews and Gentiles even more through dietary and other laws. In fact, Israel was given a total of 613 laws by God. The nation of Israel was born out of Egypt. He set the nation of Israel, the circumcision, above the rest of the nations. Whenever the word of God distinguishes between Jews and Gentiles, We know that prophecy not mystery is an effect. In the ages to come prophecy, the law, and Israel's preferred nation status will again be in effect. Today we are living in the but now, the dispensation of grace. We are not living under the law today. Currently, we are saved apart from Israel, and apart from the law, there is no difference between a Gentile and a Jew today. Israel as a nation is not worshipping their Messiah at this time. They do not have preferred nation status at this time. They only occupy a small sliver of all the land promised to them. Paul received the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20 verse 24, from the ascended, glorified Lord Jesus Christ and preached the gospel of Christ, Romans 1 verse 16, the power of God to salvation to all who would believe. We are not Jesus' disciples. Instead, we are ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians, new creatures, ambassadors, believers in the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4, become new creatures in Christ individually when they trust what Jesus has done and also become part of the new creature, the church, the body of Christ. As believers, we are not the same person we used to be. The old us died when we identified with Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection. We are new creatures, with new natures, in a new dispensation, in a new agency, and new destiny. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 Thank you, Lord. As believers, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation to help others to trust what Jesus has done and to be reconciled to God. Through Christ, we have peace with God, Romans 5 verse 1, and we are to tell others how they can have this peace. God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech, beg, you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, in his place, be ye reconciled, 
from being enemies to being friends by faith, to God, 2 Corinthians 5 verses 18 to 20. God is dispensing grace today, not imputing sins. It is unbelief, not sins, which keep a person from having eternal life with God. Believers are part of this ministry. We are ambassadors, because we are already seated with Christ in heaven. And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 verse 6 Like all foreign ambassadors, the body of Christ believers will be called home, raptured, before the war, the wrath of God. We do this ministry because of our love for Christ out of gratitude, not because we have to, but want to. He first loved us, for the love of Christ constraineth us. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 What is Satan's policy of evil in this dispensation? Satan blinds the minds of those who are lost from the glorious gospel. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 3 and 4 Justification by faith is the good news. God is able to impute His Son's righteousness to two groups, the body of Christ now, and Israel in the future. God won over Satan by keeping the gospel and a secret. Satan also attacks the message, the messenger, discredits the messenger, discourages the messenger, and tries to bring division between the body of Christ believers. Sound doctrine is our defense against Satan's false doctrine. Christ did not reveal the fact that it was checkmate at the cross to Satan until Paul. Not only did the God of this world lose the earth, but the prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2 verse 2, realized that he lost the heavenly places also when he heard the mystery. Satan is creating corrupt Bibles to conceal what Christ revealed through Paul, to hide the truth of the word of God rightly divided and the mystery of the formation of the body of Christ. Today, Satan is causing as much trouble as he can, especially in the churches. There is only one true church, the body of Christ, yet today we have so many denominations, because of the doctrines of men. Satan is happy when pastors teach that believers are spiritual Israel, mixing the things that belong to Israel, with those that belong to the church, mix law and grace, and add works such as water baptism, speaking in tongues, and other requirements as necessary for salvation. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 God's twofold will for today Once we realize God's twofold will, we do our best to do our part. Who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? 1 Timothy 2 verse 4 Faith not works. We are saved by grace through faith in what Jesus has done, not by our works. There will be no boasting in heaven. For by grace ye are saved through faith, in the salvation accomplished by Christ, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 Once we are saved, we can do good works out of love for God. No sign gifts today. The body of Christ believers do not follow physical signs. We walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. We live by faith, Romans 1 verse 17. Faith is believing what God says in His Word. We build up the inward man, soul, and spirit by understanding the sound doctrine given to us by God through Paul. After arriving in Rome on house arrest, Paul set the Jews aside in Acts 28 verse 28, and healing died out. God told Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Later, Paul left his friend sick, because he could not heal him. Trophimus have I left at my lead him sick, 2 Timothy 4 verse 20. The body of Christ believers walk by faith, not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, in the doctrine, Romans 6 verse 17. In the present dispensation of grace, God is more interested in building up our inner man, soul, and spirit, through His Word. 
When we go to heaven, our inner man is all that we can take with us. We walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 No physical circumcision. Our circumcision is spiritual, not physical. The removal of a little piece of skin does not matter. What matters is what Christ has done for us on the cross. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Colossians 2 verse 11 He removed the consequences of sin from the believer, he cut off the power of sin, and at the rapture, he will free us from the presence of sin. Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us? 2 Corinthians 1 verse 10 We are saved by the hearing of faith, Galatians 3 verse 2, in what Christ has done, not made perfect in our flesh. We walk by faith in God's word so that by love we can serve one another. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Galatians 5 verse 6 Faith in the finished work of Christ is what matters. Our baptism is spiritual, not physical. Today there is only one baptism, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Ephesians 4 verse 5, and it is spiritual, not physical. We are baptized into the body of Christ, which does not involve a drop of water. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 Paul said that Christ sent him not to baptize. In contrast, Peter said water baptism was necessary to demonstrate one's faith in Christ. Paul preached Christ crucified and risen again, the offense of the cross. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 17 and 18 Peter taught water baptism because Israel was to be a holy nation of washed kingdom priests. But Paul said that our baptism is identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death and a water, that Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, Romans 6 verses 3 and 4. Believers have Christ's righteousness, our sins, were judged at the cross. Our old nature was crucified, and we are raised with him having a new nature. Paul worked to lay the foundation of the church. Clearly, Paul suffered many things for the body of Christ's sake. Toward the end of his life, he wrote to Timothy to say that almost everyone had abandoned him, but that he knew that the Lord would be able to keep what he had committed unto him. For the which, cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. 2 Timothy 1 verse 12 If you are understanding the message of grace given in the Bible and explained in this book, then it proves that the Lord has been faithful. The letters of Paul follow the order given in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Romans equals doctrine 1 and 2 Corinthians equals reproof, Galatians correction, Ephesians equals doctrine, Philippians equals reproof, Colossians correction, 1 and 2 Thessalonians equals doctrine, instruction in righteousness. 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon equals doctrine, instruction in righteousness. Paul said that if we understand the sound doctrine in his letters, 
then we would be able to understand the rest of the Bible. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. 2 Timothy 2 verse 7 The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head, Christ, over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ephesians 1 verses 22 and 23 The Rapture The Rapture is the next event in God's plan, do not miss being part of it. The Rapture of the Church was not revealed until Jesus revealed it to Paul. The Rapture is a mystery exclusively found in Paul's epistles. It will be swift. The vile body is changed. Behold, I shew you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 and 52 We have a blessed hope, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Titus 2 verse 13 The body of Christ will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and the dispensation of the grace of God will end. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 and 17 Heaven is the destination for the body of Christ, not the earth. Therefore, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Colossians 3 verse 2. Next is the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, where we will be judged for service done in his body, whether it be good or bad. After that, we will appear with him in glory. Colossians 3 verse 4.